How to deal with the press and other media is often a consideration for judicial office holders. Yeah, de dealing with the press for judges, I think, has two separate aspects. There's the issue of the press in the courtroom or the hearing room, and then there's our own personal dealings with the press, which can also be an issue. The press are critical to the way justice is administered in this country. And having a fair reporting of our proceedings is central. Transparency is key. And the starting point is the press should be able to fairly report all proceedings. There will, of course, be exceptions. Uh, there are exceptions, for example, in relation to young people and identifying who they are. Some proceedings are held in private. But even there, the move is towards more transparency. The president of the family division uh, indicated that in family proceedings, there should be more reporting than currently is the case. In criminal proceedings, the, the general proposition is that the press are not only allowed to be present, they're always allowed to be present, except in very rare cases of national security, uh, but they should be able to report what they hear and see. There may be circumstances where proceedings uh, may not be reported at all, or there may be a delay, but they're very much the exception rather than the rule. In fact, I've just had a case come in front of me in relation to um, the press and press restrictions. Um, the defendant in this case, uh, who's not legally represented, doesn't know the law, has made an application for his name and address not to be read out in court. Now, the, the position on this is quite clear. Um, this is something you'd only do very exceptionally. Uh, it's covered by Section 11 of the Contempt of Court Act, which says that um, there are circumstances where it may be necessary, and that's the word the statute uses, uh, to restrict the reporting of something, which of course can include name and address. Um, but but our, our starting point, as I say, is freedom of expression. It's open and transparent proceedings. And that's something which is very, very central to our criminal justice system. So, you know, you, you have the challenge then, He's, he doesn't have a lawyer, so you don't have the assistance of uh, a formal application. He's given me certain information, which he says supports his argument that other judges in other courts have made an order, in fact, already. So I'm treading with caution. I'm having inquiries made to see whether any orders are in existence because he hasn't brought them with him. And this is always the difficulty, isn't it, with, with litigants in person. They don't know what they need to bring. And is it their fault? Well, not necessarily. We can't assume that every person knows what is expected of them before they come to court. Um, so I'm waiting for the outcome of those inquiries to see whether I can um, get some confirmation that some orders are already in place. If that's the case, well, then that's the end of the matter. If not, I'm then really going to have to ask myself, is there a risk to his life, serious injury? What evidence is there in this particular case? Because those are the sorts of things which might fall within that sort of exceptional category where I would make a Section uh, 11 order. Into court, I'm whatever. all coming to court. I've Fine. been released Fine. to deal with okay. this. Okay, well, continuity is a good you. thing. Uh, it's, we said half past 12. Yeah. We have a couple of minutes. I'll make my way. Fine. And see if he's there and ready to. Good. Okay, good. I'll see this is exactly what I thought would happen. We've made inquiries and we can't get, a dis we can't get any information either way. So I can't confirm what he's saying is true, but I can't say what he's saying is untrue. Here's really weird. Outside, I was stopped by a journalist. I didn't know her. Yeah. So this woman stops me in the street, yeah. stranger, 
She goes, you don't know who I am, but I know who you are. Oh, dear. And I thought, oh, oh God. <laughs> she, <laughs> I thought, no, I'm out of here. Um, so she goes, um, I was sitting in the back of your court three weeks ago on that Indian case. Yeah. And there were like 20 or 30 journalists and there wasn't enough space. And somebody had said, there's not enough space for all of you. So they'd been told, you can't come in. So I said, no, come and sit in the lawyer's benches. Come and sit where probation are. Come and sit in the sides. Yes. All of you are welcome. And I think I must have said something, and I can't remember what I said, but I must have said something like, mm -hmm. you know, open justice is central to, to what we do. Open transparency is, 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 is key and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And she told me that the headline in the national newspapers mm -hmm. in India the next day mm -hmm. was nothing about the merits of the case, yeah. but about open, transparent English justice. Yeah. We take it for granted. Yeah. We take it for granted. And, and when you get that sort of feedback, and also I think it's really important in extradition because people have perceptions of other countries' legal systems. They, the, you know, they come in and they've got preconceptions yeah. that will be like what they've seen before. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I have to say, when she said that, I was so chaffed. Mm, yes. Because we didn't do anything special. We didn't do anything we wouldn't do. Yeah. But that was the headline. Yeah in their newspapers. So, you know, yeah, so we're doing a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, I was here earlier this week. Um, at the Bailey, we were having a meeting about uh, getting messages to students about what the judiciary do. Well, the Lord Chief Justice has got this project at the moment. He's really concerned that when we had the enemy of the people, yeah. that he actually showed a lack of understanding in the public mm -hmm. about what we do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how do you get opportunities to engage with the public and say, you know, we're not the enemy of the people. Mm -hmm. You know, we make difficult decisions. Yes. We make decisions which may be unpopular. Mm -hmm. We apply the law. Mm -hmm. we, we are not political. Yes. We stand apart. Yes. And so you've got to get those messages across. Yes. Well, um, we made the inquiries with the judges and nothing came back confirming what the defendant uh, was arguing. Um, I therefore considered the test. And, and as I said earlier, these proceedings take place in public unless there is some, and there's a guide that judges use to this. And what the guide says is that I have to consider whether I have been provided clear and cogent evidence to show that publication would create or materially increase the risk of death or serious injury. And nothing I heard came close to persuading me. So I explained in simple English to the defendant why. Uh, I then invited the press back in and told the press exactly what had happened because I don't want to do things in secret. We do things in open, uh, in, in open court. And open court is where we ended up because that's how we do justice. There are occasions, of course, where the judge becomes the news himself or herself. Um, fortunately, we have a press team, uh, which is available 24 hours a day, and they are there to advise. They're there to advise on how to deal with the media uh, if any response, for example, is necessary. They're also there to assist us uh, more widely in relation to how and where we speak, because there are also understandable restrictions on um, the sort of things judges speak on. Uh, and um, I certainly commend the press office who uh, are now dealing with all aspects of media, whether it be our interaction through Twitter, um, Facebook, or face-to-face. -face.